Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a good Monday. Thought I'd uh, jump on here and uh, take a look at the new Eternals trailer that Marvel dropped this morning. It's a pretty epic trailer, I got to tell you. Um, I'm I'm really kind of taken aback by it a little bit. It's not what I expected, but uh, let's take a look at it together, and you can give your thoughts on it and. Uh, I'm going to pr probably pop in every once in a while during the trailer and make a few comments, but uh, let's take a look at it and see what you think. Now, let's go with that one. There we go. Okay. Uh, just first off, the song choice is rather interesting. This is uh, from 1962. It's Skeeter Davis's End of the World, which the song itself is more about a breakup, but having an idea of what the movie may be covering, that may be a very appropriate term. So also keep in mind, this is directed by Chloe Zhao of uh, No Man Land. No Man Land. And um, they've talked about how it's this big, epic, sweeping, beautiful thing. And I, I think we're going to see that in this trailer, that this doesn't look like any other Marvel movie. Okay, those two there, that's uh, Gemma Chan playing Cersei and Richard Madden playing Icarus. Now, you probably recognize both of them. Madden, of course, comes from um, Game of Thrones where he played Rob Stark. And Gemma Chan played Minerva in the uh, Captain Marvel movie. So she's one of the few people to ever be in two Marvel movies. It's two different characters. So... Now, so Icarus and uh, Cersei, who have had a long relationship over the eons. This, this goes all the way back to Mesopotamia. This is a very old uh, moment here. These, these characters have been around for basically since the dawn of man. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there because that's a good time to talk about the cast. Now, you've got on the far left here is Kamal Najani, and he's playing Kingo, who is a Bollywood star in the modern day. Then there is um, uh, Lauren Ridloff, who is playing Makari. We have uh, Brian. No, that's. Uh, Ma Dung Mok, yeah, Ma Dung Sok, who's playing Gilgamesh, Angelina Jolie as um, Thena, Icarus Richard Madden. This is Salma Hayek as Ajak, the spiritual leader. Rich uh, Icarus is the team leader, where um, Salma Hayek is kind of the spiritual leader. Ajak's the spiritual leader. Gemma Chan again as Cersei. 
This is Sprite, and she's being played by uh, Leah McHugh. Then we have Brian Tyree Henry, who is playing Fastos. And finally, um, Droog, who is Barry Cohen. Cohen? Coogan? I'm not great with these particular names. They're still new to me, so I'm getting them along. But So this is the basic Eternals lineup. They have been around since, like I said, the dawn of man. And as Ajax, uh, Selma Hayek's character, narrates, they've been watching mankind for years and guiding, giving little pushes in certain, certain directions, but never outright interfering, like when the Chitauri attack or when Thanos attacked. So they've been kind of in the background. Each of them have unique power. They have a lot of similar powers. They're all basically immortal. They can fly, stuff like that. But like uh, Faustos over here is a, a inventor. And he is... Uh, these characters are kind of where the myths come from. So he kind of becomes Hephaestus in Greek mythology. Uh, Athena becomes Athena. Uh, Gilgamesh is the famous Gilgamesh from the poem. Um, there's other. Uh, there's another example. Um, Makari kind of becomes Mercury, the speedster, or uh, Hermes. So they're they're kind of the starter of the the whole um, mythos thing. They're 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 gods on our planet to us because you know they have powers above what we can do. And that's where a lot of our, our myths come from. But let's finish the trailer. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. So now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone, who do you think is going to lead the Avengers? I could lead them. <laughs> Okay, let's back that up a little bit. Yeah, let's get the logo on the screen. There we go. And take it to here. All right. So, The Eternals. Uh, what you need to know about The Eternals is it's a comic series that was created by Jack Kirby. And in an era where Kirby bounced around a little bit, he had felt betrayed by Marvel. Left was a uh, basically enhanced over uh, enticed over to dc where he created stuff like the fourth world and mr miracle and big barda and the creeper and these other great books that um we all you know love over there but never really took off and he he didn't stay there long eventually he came back to marvel where in, in a way this was him kind of redoing the fourth world, at least in my opinion. I don't know. You may disagree with me, but it felt like he was kind of doing it again back over here. He wanted to continue that story. So he created the Eternals, and it they tie into the Celestials, the big uh, creatures that we see in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, these cosmic beings. Uh, nowhere, the, the, the floating head in space is the head of a Celestial. Uh, we see one of the Celestials using a uh, the Power Stone to wipe out a planet. Well, these Celestials are these cosmic beings, and they like to travel around and experiment on planets. Now, what Kirby did was he had it set up that they came to Earth, and they created the Eternals and the Deviants as kind of an experiment. And the Deviants, um, they're like Eternals with a different gene, so they look mutated. Most of the time they look almost beastly or de demonic. And supposedly they did this on many planets like Titan, where Thanos comes from. And so in the comics, Thanos is related to the Eternals and the Deviants. Will that be the case here in the, com in the movies? That remains to be seen. But he's a Eternal with the Deviant Gene, hence him looking purple with the, the ribbed chin. Now, um, what we're getting here 
is very different than any other Marvel movie. It's this big, epic scope film. It reminds me a little bit of 2001 in the, the way it opens and the big thing. Uh, and it's something Marvel hasn't really done. The closest thing that's done would have been uh, the first Thor movie with the way Kenneth Branagh shot it and treating Asgard and stuff. It's going to be similar in that, but even more epic. Um, also, we think that they're going to borrow from the Neil Gaiman run on Eternals, which would explain certain things, like why they didn't get involved with uh, Thanos. And that's because at some point, one of the characters wipes all their minds, and they go basically don't have their memories, and eventually they return, they get their memories back. So it is possible that that's how we're going to see these characters, is we'll have one of them awaken and start putting everything back together. Um, and, and, you know, eventually because there's a threat coming. And in the comic, the threat is that along with experimenting on the Earth, the Celestials basically put another Celestial, an egg or whatever it is, to birth another Celestial inside of Earth. So as it grows, it's going to destroy the planet. It's about to wake up, and when it does, it's going to pretty much destroy the Earth. And that's kind of the bad guy in that, is that they're trying to figure out how not to awaken the Celestial. And their job is to be there to awaken the Celestial. So it should be interesting. Now, it looks like they're changing things here, where the uh, the Deviants were, the, the Test and the Eternals were put here to kind of protect mankind from the Deviants. So it's a little different than what Kirby created. Um not really shown much we see him in one point is kit harrington uh kit harrington's character is uh, dane whitman who in comics becomes the black knight now i don't know if they'll actually i don't know if they'll actually get to the black knight in here or just set him up but we're getting that character and in the comics there is a romance between cersei and dane whitman so what they're doing here is also in history, you know, as the years went by, the relationship was Cersei and Icarus. So we're getting this weird love triangle. But if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you've got to be really thrown off because you've got the actor that plays Rob Stark and the actor that plays Jon Snow that were basically raised as brothers. And they're in a love triangle with someone named Cersei. Now, it's a different spelling than the character from uh, Game of Thrones, but it is kind of funny. And if you, like I said, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this ought to look really funny to you. Um, now, the ending scene, I think, is the last thing I want to cover here. They don't really give us much of the plot, and it's not supposed to. This is like an early teaser. Maybe the second one will give us more of the plot. We'll get to see the Celestials, Deviants, and stuff like that. This is more to introduce the idea, the epic scope, to show how grand and beautiful this movie is going to be. And it does look that way as it travels through the centuries and, the, and basically the maturity, the maturing of mankind. There's, um, so, so we're not seeing much of that. We're just getting introduced to the Eternals and the concept and the main characters. But the ending scene gives us something different. It gives us not only a little bit of levity to show that it's still a Marvel movie, but also it ties directly into a Mar into Marvel by referencing the Avengers. And so much that, you know, Sprite says, well, now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are gone, who's going to lead the Avengers? So they know the Avengers exist. And they know that, uh, you know, that they're important. And Icarus is like, hey, I, I could go lead them. And everybody laughs. Because, and I don't know why, because he probably could. He, he, he's the leader of them, so he could. And he does have a lot of powers. He's Superman-esque in a lot of ways. Um, so he'd make an interesting leader on the Avengers. But the joke, and so it shows the levity of the joke. But also it's interesting that the way Sprite says it isn't, that they're dead is that they're gone, 
which was one of the things we saw in Falcon Winter Soldier, that every reference to Steve Rogers was that he was gone, never used the word dead. And the other interesting thing is that they refer to him as Captain Rogers, not Captain America. And I think that's to show that it's been accepted that there's a new Captain America. So Captain America isn't gone. Captain Rogers is gone. And Tony Stark and Captain and uh, Steve Rogers were the ones that ran the Avengers. So that, I thought that was pretty interesting there. Uh, some of the other scenes that you might notice, uh, there looks like a Hollywood dan a Holly a Bollywood dancing scene. That's uh, Kong Kung's char Kong's character, Kingo. Excuse me, Kingo's character, and that's uh, he's a bongo. Uh, he's a Bollywood star. So that's also why you see that other guy sitting next to him and going around with him carrying a camera. Is that's his personal documentary guy or film? So he's constantly filming him. Uh, a couple other things. There's a scene where it looks like there's a bunch of, I don't want to say cult members, but it's kind of, a, and that's what Druig is doing in the modern day, is he's got a group of people and he's trying to use his telepathy to control them. It's kind of like a cult. Um, Fastos is going to be interesting. He is living, he is uh, going to be the first openly gay hero in the MCU. And he is living with his son or his uh, husband and son, and he's the creator type, and that's you know what we get with them. Uh, Ajax, we see in a cowboy hat, she's riding a horse. It looks like she's gone off and is running a farm. So, and we see other ways how they're helping humanity through the years. But the whole purpose of this trailer, again, is just to establish that these are basically gods among humans. Their, their power puts them on that level and that they've been around forever. They've been around as long as mankind has. And while they've been involved, they've, you know, Faustos has created some things that have helped mankind, stuff like that. They're not interfering directly. And that's about to change. And that's, you know, that's that's the important thing is that whatever is about to happen is big enough that they're going to have to change. They're going to have to get involved. Think of it kind of like Star Trek and the Prime Directive. Well, that's their, their time to skip the Prime Directive. Something bad's happening. And I think that's going to be um, the celestial that's buried in the earth. Now, again, that might not be the direction they're going with this film. We had that, but that's what I'm hearing is that they're following the Neil Gaiman story. If you want to get a little heads up on these guys, that Gaiman story is awesome. It's a good uh, take on the characters. It's not that old. I picked it up in trade not too long ago. I would hold it up, but I couldn't find my copy. I've got it around here somewhere. But so that's the basics behind this. There's, it, it's going to tie into the Marvel Universe, but it's also big. You know, it's it's an epic scope series, and it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to it because Marvel has always done smaller films, a little more grounded. Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy was out there, but even though it's a cosmic thing, they still kind of kept it focused on these guys, the the, the team. Um, they didn't really go with the big concepts. And Marvel can get into the big cosmic concepts. The, the Infinity Stones are a big cosmic concept, but again, they focused on Thanos. They focused on humanity. They didn't really get, you know, they, they dance on those things. This is time to rip that open where we we now have magic in the Marvel Universe. We have to accept that there's magic in the Marvel Universe. Now we have to accept there's these big cosmic beings. And that's that's the amazing thing about uh, Marvel is we have, I mean, it, with, with comics altogether, you have these moments where you have these characters that are extremely grounded, like, say, Moon Knight, and then you have characters like Silver Surfer that is completely cosmic, and 
and you, they all exist in the same universe. And you've got magic and science and all this stuff going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jamal asks, do you think the MCU will connect Thanos to the Eternals? I talked about that a little bit earlier. The potential is there. Um, and it might even be the reason they use that he didn't they didn't get involved because it's another eternal that was doing this. But he's also an eternal with a deviant gene. So maybe they would have gotten involved. So it might be the whole they don't have their memory. But I I, I think they will play that angle. And maybe we're gonna get some opportunities to see like young Thanos. You know, bring back Josh Brolin for some scenes and stuff. Um, yeah, I think they will because I think it gives them a lot of potential. With the Eternals, there haven't been that many stories out there of the Eternals. And usually the Celestials are the story, you know, the bad guy. is either the Deviants or the Celestials. If they do this and they're already talking about a sequel then there's a good chance they're going to need to expand out and maybe even leave Earth to get another threat level. And perhaps they go to Titan. Perhaps we get to meet Star Fox and some of those characters. And we get that, you know, we move out. Maybe this is the way we get more cosmic because Gunn is going to wrap up his Guardians of the Galaxy series with the third film. And again, that's as, as cosmic as they got, it's still pretty self-contained. I think this is going to open the door to the big, epic cosmic stories. Yeah, the Infinity Saga was supposed to be that, and it did some, but this is going to be able to bring us, you know, take us to other planets, take us to other reality, things like that. So, yeah, I think they will connect Thanos to the Eternals so much that maybe it, the second movie will take them to Titan so we could see other groups like that. Or maybe they stay on Earth. I don't know. I think um, there's a good chance that we're going to get uh, somebody from the Eternals on the Avengers when there finally is a new Avengers team. My guess is it's Cersei, and she's kind of the star of this that Cersei and the Black Knight end up joining the Avengers, though Icarus would be an interesting choice. I think it's going to be Cersei, and we'll just have to see how that works out. But, yeah, I think Marvel's got big plans for the Eternals, and I think connecting it to Thanos will be part of it. But, again, there aren't a lot of really good Eternal stories out there. Like I said, there's Neil Gaiman's, and there's Jack Kirby's original run. So these are kind of a big concept that has never really done a lot in in the in the comics um the inhumans were much more used and and maybe they'd be doing an inhumans movie now had it not been for the failure of the tv series but they're they're going big on this and and they're keeping the the jack kirby feel to it um, but also you look at this trailer and it's gorgeous. Some of the scenes and stuff, Chloe Zhao is just bringing her aesthetic to it. And I think that's awesome. I think, um, the one thing I love about the MCU, and I think it's what a lot of these other groups that are trying to do cohesive universes are, or shared universes are failing at is that every movie in the Marvel, every franchise in the Marvel universe, MCU is kind of its own genre. You know, first thing, you can't think of superhero as a genre. It's no more a genre than being a cop in a movie as a genre because you can have a movie like Training Day and you can have a movie like Police Academy and they're both about cops, but they're not anywhere similar. So I think this is the grand epic cosmic movie line is where it's going, where Captain America was a war movie, then it became a, a spy thriller. You know, Iron Man is your tech movie, your sci-fi movie. You know, 
Guardians of the Galaxy is Star Wars. It's, so this is its own little notch. This is its 2001, 2010. Uh, what do you think the Black Origins role will be, seeing how he may be time-traveling character? I don't see him as being a time-traveling character. I think he is going to be... He is going to be the audience's character. Um, if this plays out as I think, and again, this is all absolute speculation, um, I think Cersei is going to be, and Kevin Feige says that Cersei is kind of the star of the show, even though it's an ensemble. But I think it's going to be Cersei and Dane, and Dane is going to be us. Dane is going to be the human that is experiencing all this and learning all about this and because she wouldn't have a need to explain it to anybody else. So, you know, any of the other Eternals, I think it's, it's again, if they follow the Neil Gaiman storyline, then it's going to be them waking up these other Eternals and kind of figuring out what's going on. Again, I'm not, that's, that's what I'm hearing they're going to do. But my speculation is that Dane is going to be the every man now, I don't think he's going to end up as the Black Knight in this, but he might learn about it, and he might end up with the blade. I just don't know if he'll actually end up as the Black Knight, you know, actively acting as the Black Knight. I think this will be this will be the Eternals movie, and he'll be like an add-on. So I think he'll be more important as Dane Whitman than he will be as the Black Knight. And I think he's, you know, there's going to be that weird love triangle going on between Icarus and Cersei and Dane. Dane is the modern day. He's human. And that's what I think his role is going to be. He's going to be the audience. He's going to be the one that everything is explained to and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think that's his role is going to be. How much he'll be in it, I don't know. We didn't. I mean, we see him once in the entire trailer, but then of course that could just be really good shooting, real, you know, editing, real good editing to pick scenes that he's not in. And there's no saying this is going to be a linear movie. You know, we see them all showing up on Earth, and then we see them uh, helping mankind through history, stuff like that. Nothing says we're going to get it in that order. It could start in modern day with. Cersei and Dane and all this stuff we learn and she's telling this story to Dane. I mean, that could be the direction they go. And then eventually we get to where there's the big celestial and she's waking up the, uh, the other uh, inhuman or the other inhumans eternals. So it could absolutely be that direction as well. So I, but I think he's going to be the human connection. He's going to be the audience for the audience, uh, surrogate in this case so. all right guys i think that's gonna do it that went about a little longer than i thought but uh it's it's a fascinating looking movie um i look forward to seeing the next trailer because again this one is just the intro of these are our characters and we've got a lot of big names the next one should be a little more about the plot at least that's my hope so when that'll be, I don't know. This movie doesn't come out till November. Uh, was it November 5th? Yeah, November 5th. So we got a ways. We've still got Black Widow. We've got um, Shang-Chi. We got a Venom movie who I know isn't MCU, but he's kind of MCU adjacent. So there's a lot of stuff coming on before we get to Eternals. So well, there's plenty more we'll see, but this is just the opening teaser. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will be on tomorrow on the experience for the Dan Wickline show where I will talk with a lot of the current news. I mean, there's a bunch of news coming out right now with Henry Cavill as the Highlander, Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka, the CW passing on painkiller, but bringing Naomi. So there's a ton of news that I'll be covering tomorrow. And then I'll probably go more in depth on the history of the Eternals tomorrow. So if you want, you know, this is just me off the top of my head. I'm going to do a little more digging, get a little more uh, established, talk about the characters a little more in depth. So that'll be tomorrow on the Dan Wickline show at 2 p.m. Pacific. 
uh, 5 p.m. Eastern over on the experience. So thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.